So at the last video, we saw that we were able to get to at least um, some form of a recurrence relation. Um, and so this is where we end up with. Uh, we also found that R1 was equal to zero and that R2 was equal to three halves. And so what we're going to end up with is we're going to end up with two recurrence relations. All right. um, I did make an error, by the way, in the last video. Um, when I went back here, I forgot to carry the two all the way down to this C sub K. Um, so all the way back, remember we had like two C sub K, etc. And when we broke off the recurrence relation, um, there should have been two of those. All right, so there should have been a two right here. All right, so I do apologize about that. Um, and there should be a two right in front of this. All right, um, it didn't alter anything especially with the initial equation, because indeed we did carry the two into that. All right, so apologies about that. Hopefully um, that didn't mess anybody up while you were doing this. Okay, so at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to substitute zero. We're going to substitute three halves and see if we can get some sort of form of a recurrence relation. All right, so let's pick the easy one first. Might as well. Let's see what happens when R is equal to zero. So when R is equal to zero, we get two c sub k plus 1, we get k plus 1 times k minus c sub k plus 1 times k plus 1, and then plus 2c sub k is equal to 0. Um, we can simplify this by factoring out um, the c sub k plus 1 as well as the k plus 1 and then we can see what's left over so if we factor out c sub k, c sub k plus 1 um, times k plus 1 excuse me from the first two terms that's going to leave us with 2k minus 1 and again I just factored this 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 this, all right, plus 2c sub k equals 0. And now we can finally get to a recurrence relation at this point that for when r is equal to 0, we get this recurrence relation. 2ck plus 1 is going to be equal to the opposite of 2c sub k divided by k plus 1, 2k minus 1. All right, so that's when um, r is going to be equal to 0. And we still have to go through our method of iteration. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we have our k. Um, and k, let's just do three or four of these. All right. So when k is equal to 0, um, that means that c sub k plus 1, which is this animal right here, is going to be that c1 is going to be equal to negative 2 c naught divided by, if we plug in 1 in here, that's going to be 2 times 1, or we could just write that as minus c naught if we wanted to simplify it. All right, so that makes it a little bit easier to work with. Um, c sub 2, that's going to be equal to the opposite of 2 c1. Now, if I plug in 1 back in here, we get 2, and I think I made an error, calculation error, excuse me, right here. We're plugging in 0, so I apologize. So this should be 1 times negative 1. So this is going to be a negative 1 up here. All right, so by substituting 0 in, this k and this k goes away, so we get negative 1, which is just going to turn into 2c0. Okay, so sorry about that. Um, for the next one, that's going to be negative 2c sub 1. So now we're plugging in 1 into here. So that's going to give us 2 times 1. So I think I was plugging in 1 last time rather than, two, than 0. So that's just going to end up with 2 right there in the denominator. So that's 2 times 1. And then that should be equal to the opposite of c1 which is, we already know what C1 is, so that's really going to just end up being negative 2 C naughts. All right, so, so far it's looking pretty good. Right. Um, C3, 
Now C3 is going to be equal to negative 2 C2s divided by, if I substitute 2 back in, that's going to be 3 times 3, which is 9. Right? Um, and then we could just substitute negative 2 C0 back in. And so this should end up being 4 ninths C0. Right? And I'm going to circle these because these are going to be our powers. All right, and that should be good enough. All right, we, we now we have four terms in there. All right, so what does our y1 look like? All right, so y1 of x, remember that's going to be our series n equals 0 to infinity, c sub n, x to the n plus k, or n plus r, excuse me. But we know that r was equal to 0 at this point. All right, so in reality, that's going to be series n equals 0 to infinity of c sub n x to the n plus 0. And now all we have to do is just go ahead and substitute back in. Right? And so y1 of x is going to be equal to c0. All right, so we had that term. If we go back up here, c1 is two c zeros. So that's going to be plus 2c0 x to the first. It's really x plus 1 plus 0. All right, but we just have x to the first. All right, and then we go back up and we have minus 2c0 for c2. So that's going to be minus 2c0 x squared. And then finally, we have this 4 ninths c0 for the third power. So plus 4 ninths c0 x cubed. All right. And then we would have plus a dot, dot, dot. And we could just leave it exactly like that. All right, so that's one of our solutions, and that's the easier one. Now, we still have to find the other solution. All right, so the other solution, remember, is when r is equal to, unfortunately, 3 halves. And we have this treasure all the way back up here. All right, so I'm going to copy this so I don't forget it. Or make an error again. So we copy this down here. All right. And we are going to substitute three halves back in for R. All right. So what does that mean? Well, that means that we get 2 C sub K plus 1 times K plus R plus 1. Remember, R is three halves. So that's going to be K plus 5 halves. All right. So we have 1, 3 halves plus 1. Um, and then we have k plus r, so that's going to be k plus 3 halves, minus c sub k plus 1, k plus r, and I think that's a k plus r, let me go all the way back up, yep, that was a k plus r plus 1, it just didn't copy over, so that's going to be quantity k plus r plus 1 is a k plus 5 halves again, all right, and then finally, we have plus 2 c sub k is equal to 0. All right, so this looks really ugly, doesn't it? All right, but there is a little bit of good news here, all right? Um, just like we did before, we have this k to the 5 halves that we can kind of factor out, and we have a ck plus 1 that we can factor out to make that those first two terms a little bit more manageable. So let's factor out c sub k plus 1 and then k plus 5 halves. And what's that going to leave us with? That's going to leave us with 2 quantity k plus 3 halves and then minus 1 and then finally plus 2 c sub k equals 0. And now this works out actually a lot nicer because this quantity right here we can distribute to 2 and that's just going to leave us with 2k plus 3 minus 1, or in other words, 2k plus 2, or 2 quantity k plus 1. All right, so that makes it a lot easier. So now what we're working with, just by a little bit of algebra, is going to be 2 c sub k plus 1, k plus 5 halves, k plus 1, plus 2ck equals 0. All right, and then if we finally solve for c sub k plus 1, we don't, it doesn't look all that bad when we're done with it. So 
c sub k plus 1, and what we can do is we can very astutely distribute this 2 back in, so that we don't, we don't have to deal with that 5 halves power. So, we could just write this as 2k plus 5, k plus 1, plus 2c sub k equals 0, and that's a lot cleaner. We don't have any fractions to deal with, mercifully. So, c sub k plus 1, our recurrence relation, is going to be negative 2c sub k over 2k plus 5, k plus 1. All right, and at this point, it's just plug and chug. All right, we're just going to have to go through and bully it out so that way we can go through and get to our recurrence relation. All right, so I'm going to give us a little bit of room here to work with. All right, and I'm going to copy the recurrence relation. All right, almost done. We're getting there. So all the way up here we have this. And... So now we can just have k, so we're going to have 0, 1, 2, let's just get the first three terms and that should be good enough. All right. And then we can get c sub k plus 1. So when k is equal to 0, that's going to mean that c sub 1 is going to be equal to minus 2c naught, um, 5 times 1 is going to be 5. All right. So that's nice and easy for, one, for 0. Um, c2 is going to be equal to the opposite of two C1s. Now when we plug one back in, that's going to give us seven times two. And then it's going to give us a minus C1 over seven. Um, but we already know that C1 is really negative two-fifths C0. And so if we throw that back in, that should give us 2 over 35 C naught. So hopefully that computes out really nicely for everybody. Um, if you don't believe me, just go back through it and do the arithmetic yourself. And then finally for C3, hopefully this doesn't work out too ugly, um, negative 2 C2 divided by, we're plugging 2 in, so that's going to be 9 times 3 is 27. All right, so we plug 2 in here, that gives us 4 plus 5, which is 9. 2 plus 1 is 3, so that's going to give us a 27. But we already know that C2 is this 2 35ths. All right, so, oh boy, that's going to be really ugly, but that's okay. Um, so that's going to be negative 4 C0 over 27 times 35. And that's going to be 945. All right, and that should be enough for us to be able to get to our y2. Um, now, I'm going to replace c naught with b naught. All right, because remember these are linearly independent solutions, and we can't assume that c naught is equal to c naught from the previous. So, what does y2 of x look like? Now, be careful. Remember, this is the series n equals zero to infinity c sub n x to the n plus r and remember r was equal to three halves all right so we have to be really careful because now the powers of x are not going to be integer powers they're actually going to be rational powers when we do this all right so that's pretty cool all right so finding our y2 in fact what we could do is we could just say that we could factor out the x to the three halves and have that equal to the series n equals 0 to infinity, c sub n, x to the n. All right, make that a little bit easier for ourselves. Um, so I'm going to factor that out that x to the 3 halves. Right? And then we're just going to go ahead and do what we did with the powers from before. So remember we have, now we're going to use b instead of c, so that's b naught. Um, c1 was negative 2 fifths b naught, so that's going to be negative two-fifths x b naught. All right, so remember that's because we have the first power in our power series. Um, plus two-thirty-fifths over, it should be a 35, not a 38. So two-thirty-fifths. All right. 
doesn't want to work, so I'll just delete it. So we're going to have 2 35ths um, x square b naught. And then finally, we have this negative um, 4 over 945. So minus 4 over 945 x cube b naught plus dot dot dot. All right. We could have factored out the B naught if we really wanted to. All right, so that's our other linearly independent solution. And remember, we had Y1 all the way back up here. I'm going to copy that down, and then we'll be done with this. All right, so um, this animal right here, I'll delete that. And we're done. I'll clean that up just a little bit. So our Y1, all the way back down here, is this. We don't need this stuff right here. And so our two solutions are given using the method of Frobenius. All right, so this goes away. And this is one of our solutions. All right, and then this is the other solution. Okay. And so hopefully this helps you to understand um, what we're doing with this method of Frobenius in a little bit more difficult example. All right, so hopefully this is able to help you to do your homework problems to understand um, and then also, we didn't do any of the other cases, but if it does end up with the other cases, you literally just do the exact same thing that we just did, and then you just throw them back into those other cases with the natural logarithm.